Black Mirror's Nosedive Explained and Analyzed. Hi everyone, welcome to another installment of my Black Mirror series analysis. Today we're going to be explaining and analyzing the episode Nosedive, The World According to Instagram. In this episode, everyone has a social media account that allows other people to rate them. The platform itself seems to be a combination of Instagram and Uber, with people constantly uploading aesthetic pictures of their life and being on their best behavior, as every upload and every interaction is rated. These ratings are very important as it determines people's value in this world. Anything above a 4 is pretty decent. Anything between a 3 and 4 is still respectable, but the people who have that rating don't seem to care as much or buy as wholly into the rating system as the people with higher ratings. And finally, anything less than 3 is problematic. You're at the very bottom of the social ladder and might even be considered dangerous by others. Every person has contact lens technology that allows them to read a person's rating at a single glance. Falling down the rabbit hole. We follow the story of Lacey Pound, who is obsessed with her rating. When she's not uploading carefully constructed images of her life, she's furiously rating everyone she knows with five stars, hoping that they will return the favor and boost her rating. Her life is exhausting as she's always striving for perfection. Lacey had an eating disorder in the past and she's always jogging and working out. She's also determined to be nice all the time, going so far as to practice different types of laughter for every occasion, in hopes of getting highly rated wherever she goes. All her hard work seems to have paid off. She has a rating of over 4.2, which is high enough for her to enjoy most of the advantages available in this world. But even then she's not satisfied. She's well and truly fallen down the rabbit hole. She is aspirational and wants more out of her life and she constantly compares herself to others. All this makes Lacey deeply unhappy and unsatisfied, although she doesn't seem aware of the toll her social media usage is taking on her mental health. When she is looking for a new apartment, she's seduced by the artificial perfection that is available at Pelican Cove. The marketing is clever and sells a lifestyle to Lacey that she desperately wants. Not only does the apartment boast access to exclusive restaurants and other perks, a hologram shows her a potential future of herself with a gorgeous man in tow. Lacey's life lacks real human connection and it's this vision of herself and her potential future that makes her desperate to lease the apartment. But there's an issue. She can't afford it. The real estate agent tells her that if Lacey can raise her rating to a 4.5, she can get a 20% discount, making the apartment just within Lacey's financial reach. This reflects the real world where influencers and celebrities are often given discounts not available to the ordinary person. They are the chosen few and the reasoning behind giving them these discounts is that they have a sphere of influence that will make whatever they are consuming more in demand by the masses who will have to pay full price. In Lacey's quest to reach a 4.5 rating, she enlists the services of a social media consultant to help strategize. This is similar to how companies will employ these social media experts to come in and boost their presence on platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, etc. Interestingly, the consultant points out that Lacey's high rating comes from people who are deemed mid to low range folks and on the platform their ratings do not carry as much weight as the ones from quality people who have the ratings in the high fours. Lacey needs to get these quality people to give her high ratings, not just people like the service industry worker who serves her coffee every day. This reflects once again how in our Instagram age, someone who has a decent social media following is immediately deemed more valuable than someone whose following is made up of just family and friends. In an attempt to reach these quality people, Lacey uploads an image of Mr. Rags, a toy she made with her childhood friend Naomi, who is undoubtedly a quality person, having a rating of 4.8. On the social media site, anything over a 4.5 makes you a prime user, and the profiles of these people are accompanied by a prime user label, similar to how verification icons work on Twitter and Instagram. It's all a numbers game. Lacey's post of Mr. Rags has the desired response, and Naomi contacts her out of the blue. Lacey's in the middle of making tapenade, and she suffers a spillage, something which happens in everyday life, but this world doesn't allow for imperfections, and when Naomi calls her, Lacey hurriedly puts on a shawl to cover the stain. Naomi tells Lacey she's engaged and she shows off her luxurious surroundings. She's staying in a private island owned by her fiancé's family. The pair both blame themselves for losing touch and the conversation is blatantly insincere and practiced. This is the norm in Lacey's life. 
She's often involved in these fake-sounding conversations as her ultimate goal is always to get high ratings. This can sometimes even land her in trouble as her inauthenticity can be so obvious that it puts people off. When she tried to offer a fellow office worker a croissant in hopes of ingratiating herself, the strategy backfired and Lacey was rated a 3. As Lacey and Naomi's conversation continues, there does appear to have been some sort of genuine connection between the two in the past. Naomi's recent engagement seems to have triggered feelings of nostalgia that's made her reevaluate their old friendship, so much so that she invites Lacey to be her maid of honour and to give a speech at the wedding. Lacey is overjoyed at the prospect of being invited into the heart of Naomi's inner circle, a circle that consists of high fours. She wants all those potential high ratings at the wedding from these quality people. The pair end the phone call and just as Naomi is switching off the camera, her face falls. The whole performance of the phone call has been exhausting and her expression falls back in line with what she's actually feeling. Lacey's brother Ryan, who has witnessed the phone call, is disgusted. He reminds Lacey what a poor friend Naomi was to her, but Lacey doesn't want to hear it. Ryan is the only person in her world that genuinely cares for her, but Lacey is too blinded to recognise this. All she knows is that he's a three-point something while she's striving for something more. The nosedive. Lacey's promising start toward her goal of reaching a 4.5 rating is swiftly derailed as events spiral out of her control when she's on her way to Naomi's wedding. It all begins as she and her brother argue once again over Lacey's obsession with the rating system. He realises how unhealthy it is but Lacey won't listen. She's truly addicted. The argument results in Lacey not only missing her first cab and getting rated down by the driver, she's also rated down by her brother in retaliation for her rating him down after their fight. In her rush to get on her way, she bumps into a lady with a rating of 4.8, which causes the lady to spill a drink on herself, resulting in Lacey getting yet another low rating, and this time from someone with a fair amount of clout. On the cab ride to the airport, Naomi calls Lacey to find out how she's doing and to give Lacey pointers on her draft made of honour speech. The pair are highly irritating with their fake squeals and the cab driver is unimpressed. When Lacey gives him a 5-star rating in a blatant attempt at currying favour, he gives her a 1-star. Lacey's inauthenticity has once again got her in trouble. Not everyone in this world is okay with insincerity. At the airport, Lacey's plane is cancelled and Lacey is told she's unable to book another flight because her recent spate of low ratings has meant she's fallen under her usual 4.2 rating. The attendant behind the counter is very unhelpful and Lacey explodes with anger. She's so tightly wound, always putting on a fake persona, that now that her plans for a 4.5 rating are being derailed, she loses control of her emotions as she's desperate to get to Naomi's wedding as planned. The attendant then calls security who penalises Lacey for her outburst, docking her a full point from her ratings and also multiplying any negative ratings she gets for the next 24 hours. Lacey is on double damage. Lacey then attempts to get to Naomi's wedding using a rental car but her low rating means she's limited to one of the worst vehicles available. It's a 9 hour trip to Naomi's but Lacey is so determined to get there that even though she's barely able to keep her eyes open from tiredness, she still drives on. Her priorities are all wrong. As the night wears on, things go from bad to worse. Her car runs out of electricity and she's unable to recharge it as it's such an old model that the chargers at the charging station don't fit. She then has to resort to hitchhiking but people don't want to offer her a ride as her rating has now dropped even lower. Instead of people offering to help, they actually rate her down as they drive past her. It seems that low ratings encourage others to also rate the person with the low rating unfavourably. The ratings act as some sort of social proof. If someone has a low rating, they deserve the bad rating and it's okay to continue to rate them low. This is what happened to her colleague Chester earlier in the episode. After he and his boyfriend broke up, people took his ex-boyfriend's side and Chester's rating plummeted as everyone jumped on the bandwagon and rated him poorly. His ratings fell so low that he was unable to enter his own office building as his access became barred. On the flip side, it appears that the higher a person's rating, the more likely it will be that they will continue to accrue high ratings. And those with high ratings tend to surround themselves with others who also have high ratings. They create cliques who are continually giving each other 5-star ratings. And as the higher your rating, the more your ratings count, they end up creating little pockets of exclusive quality people. Much like how social media stars in today's world form groups and friendships which has the benefit of allowing them to grow their popularity and following. Enlightenment. 
One kind soul does ultimately give Lacey a ride. That season, a trucker with a lowly rating of just 1.4. She's a breath of fresh air and she doesn't have any time for anything other than honesty. She offers Lacey a drink from a blue flask full of coffee or a red flask full of whiskey. This references a scene from the sci-fi film The Matrix where the protagonist Neo is offered a choice of either blue pill or red pill. The blue pill will allow Neo to continue living the life he knows, whereas the red pill will allow his mind to detect the simulation he is living in. Lacey refuses both and instead tells Susan her plan to get a 4.5 rating. Susan indulges Lacey's foolishness before sharing her own story. She was a 4.6 once, but when her husband got sick, she realised that despite her giving 5 stars to all and sundry, she could not save him. When his bed was given to someone with a higher rating, she lost faith in the whole system completely. The ratings in this world reflects the class divide in our own world. The rating system in Nosedive is a way of quantifying a person's socioeconomic status and we all know that in our world, the better someone's socioeconomic circumstances, the more privilege they will enjoy and the more opportunity they will have access to, from education to healthcare to future job opportunities. When Susan can't take Lacey any further, she bids her goodbye and leaves her with a red flask of whiskey. While Lacey is using a service station toilet, she overhears a couple of girls talking about how they are on their way to a convention for a sci-fi fantasy show called Sea of Tranquility. The convention is near where Naomi is having her wedding and Lacey jumps at the chance to hitch a ride by pretending to be a down-on-her-luck fan of the show whose car has broken down. Her plan works but the group is suspicious and as they are quizzing her on her knowledge of Sea of Tranquility, she gets a phone call from Naomi who no longer wants her at the wedding as Lacey's rating has fallen to a dismal 2.6. Naomi tells her she was happy to have a low 4 at her wedding as it would have played well and boosted her own ratings based on simulations she and her fiancé ran before the wedding. But a sub 3 as Lacey is right then is unacceptable. Lacey finally snaps and tells Naomi she'll be at the wedding come hell or high water and then she turns and tells the group she's hitching a ride with that she has never actually seen their show. This promptly gets her thrown off the bus and a bunch of low ratings. Lacey then chooses the red pill by gulping down her whiskey and determinedly making her way to Naomi's wedding. She borrows quad bikes from strangers, wades through muddy pools and strides through woods with her pink suitcase on her head like some kind of warrior going into battle. A pastoral world. Naomi's wedding is pastel perfection and indeed the world of Nosedive has been nothing but pastel perfection this whole time, mimicking the look and feel of highly curated Instagram feeds. There are hints however that other subcultures do also exist in this world. Lacey's brother is a gamer and Lacey refers to how he and his gamer buddies rate each other. The Sea of Tranquility fans are also engaged in the ratings game, with one complaining how her dad one starred her. And while these people are engaged with the social media platform, their usage and habits are not as extreme as those that Lacey aspires to be like. The people who live in the world of pastoral perfection have set themselves an extremely high bar to live by. Lacey's brother even claims that the high fours are probably suicidal on the inside. At the wedding, it's evident that Naomi's fiancé, Paul, is in love with his male best friend, but instead of living his true authentic self, he's chosen to marry Naomi so that together they can present the perfect couple to the outside world. When Lacey bursts in on Naomi's wedding, she launches into her speech and has a very public meltdown. Her speech is a garbled combination of the one she has rehearsed and some home truths that she can't hold back any longer. She recognises how Naomi played on her insecurities and looked down on her and how ultimately Naomi dropped her as a friend when Naomi's rating went up. Lacey is finally stopped by security and she's dragged out of the event. Her public disgrace leads to her eye technology being removed so she can no longer see ratings and she's thrown into jail. She sheds her pink bridesmaid dress and finally takes the time to appreciate the beauty of the world around her. She smiles her first genuine smile in a long time. Lacey observes a fellow inmate in the cell across from her and having shared her fake persona, Lacey demands to know what he is looking at. The pair trade insults and find release in yelling and saying whatever comes to mind. They smile as they hurl abuse at each other as they are finally free. Conclusion This episode of Black Mirror highlights the dangers of social media and how living solely in this virtual world and measuring our self-worth by likes and followers is dangerous to our mental health. Not everyone buys into this world but the popularity of social media indicates that a lot of people do. The lesson here is that in a world full of Naomi's, it's better to be a Susan.
And that concludes my explanation and analysis of the episode Nosedive in the Black Mirror series. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out my Black Mirror playlist where I explain and analyse further episodes. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.